So now what we want to do is to really look at, well, what marks dreaming as distinct from that, experientially, especially, also, of course, from the perspective of the brain, but starting with the experiential differences. And in order to talk about this, I want to differentiate between the hypnagogic state, so this is the state leading into sleep, sleep onset, dreaming, and lucid dreaming. This is an image by a painter, Pablo Roman Andrioli, called Hypnagogic Revelation. And if you look at it, it depicts the kind of images that play across your visual field if you're falling into sleep and you're doing so in a way where you know, you're not totally tired and you just kind of crash, as we say, but you're actually kind of drifting into sleep and you can become aware of various kinds of visual images, various um, sounds that you're not sure whether they're sort of in you or whether they're in the room, or thoughts that have a peculiar quality. They seem, they seem meaningful in a way, but you can't quite grasp what they are. So these are all characteristics of the hypnagogic state. Hypnagogic literally just means, from the Greek, leading into sleep. One of my favorite descriptions of the hypnagogic state comes from Proust, from his remembrance of things past, the first volume, very early in the book, the, the unnamed narrator gives the following description. He says, for a long time I went to bed early. Sometimes my candle scarcely out, my eyes would close so quickly that I did not have time to say to myself, I'm going to sleep. And half an hour later, the thought that it was time to try to sleep would wake me. I wanted to put down the book I thought I still had in my hands and blow out my light. I had not ceased while sleeping to form reflections on what I had just read. But these reflections had taken a rather peculiar turn. It seemed to me that I myself was what the book was talking about. A church, a quartet, the rivalry between Francois I and Charles V. So this is, th this is a description that marks something about the hypnagogic state, which is that there's a kind of, to use a psychoanalytic language, there's a kind of dissolution of ego boundaries. The sense that the image is one thing and I'm another, that self, non-self distinction breaks down and there's an absorption in the image as if the image is you, or what you're thinking about, or what you were just reading about is somehow you, or you're not separate from it. And, and Proust really depicts this quite marvelously, I think. So there's a dissolution as we fall into sleep between the boundaries of self and not self as they're experientially present in the waking state. But there isn't the strong sense of being immersed in a world. So right now, we all have the sense of, the presence of the world, we're immersed in a world, we can move in certain ways, we can perceive certain things, and that reappears in various ways in the dream state, the sense of being in the dream world, but the hypnagogic state is not like that. There's not the sense of being in a world, there's this kind of spectator quality where you're sort of watching things, but they're not really separate from you, where you're sort of fused into them. So the consciousness has a kind of spellbound or fascinated quality. These are actually terms that Sartre uses in his book on the imagination to talk about hypnagogia. He says there's, a, there's an identification, a fascination with these images that play spontaneously, and they shift as your eyes move. And if you try to sort of focus your attention on them visually, they sort of break apart. You have to kind of let them drift out of you, and they're highly susceptible to intention and suggestion. Mm -hmm. Well, I would describe it in the way I'm using the term consciousness now is still a conscious state because it's an experiential state. So when I use the word consciousness, I mean that there's the experience of awareness, there's some content of awareness, and there's some um, sense of self, or that sense of self can drop out in certain states of consciousness. So in, are you awake or are you in So you're in between. So if you, were to, if you were to look at it from the neuroscience perspective, the brain rhythms have a certain characteristic frequencies as you move from waking into relaxation, into drowsiness, into falling asleep. And we're in that drowsy falling into sleep period. But there's still an awareness that's present. And even sometimes an awareness of the room. So the awareness can still have um, um, content from the, from the environment as, as well. OK, so the dream state then. So that's sleep onset, or hypnagogia. The dream state, this is. This is um, Adam Elsheimer's painting of Jacob's dream. So Jacob's dream in, 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 in the Old Testament, Genesis 28, I think it is, Jacob dreams of a ladder of, with the angels going up and down from heaven. And so one of the things about the dream state is this sense that you're in a world and things are happening in the world. So that sense of immersion with presence 
where there's self versus not self reappears in the dream in a way where it's, it's dissolved in the hypnagogic state. The English poet Robert Herrick has a, this wonderful little poem. He says, here we are all by day, by night, we're hurled by dreams, each one into a several world. And this is an archaic use of several, which means separate. So we all seem to be sharing a common world and waking. As we go into the, our own dream world, it's our world. It's a separate world. But he says, we're hurled. So there's the sense of being immersed or thrown into another world. And that sense of immersion is a, is a particularly um, significant feature of the dream state. So in the hypnagogic state, then, we look at visual patterns and they absorb us. But when we dream, we experience being in the dream, or we experience being in the dream world. 